Good afternoon, Mr. President. Uh, our first question from today comes from Mia Gonzalez of Business Mirror. Good, af good morning, sir. Oh, good afternoon, sir. Sir, afternoon. Do, you, do you expect the um, Supreme Court to heed your appeal? Yeah, well, we are all at the service of our people. We hope no, that they will broaden their view and, and see the implications of this uh, singular act. Sir, what would you think? What do you think would be the um, repercussions of the Supreme Court sticking with its ruling, with its order, decision? Well, hindi ba magi automatic yan? Lahat ng mga nagsubok na magi kapit ng kusang alam pwesto, e gaganahan na humirit ulit ngayon. So magkakarong ka ng agawan sa pwesto. Habang ika-clarify sa lahat ng mga pwesto kung sino ba dapat ang manungkulan doon, eh, hihinto ang pagtakbo ng gobyerno. Paano, tayo, paano natin patatakbuhin yan? Kung sakasakali naman pong, isipin niyo, lahat ng kaso magmumula dahil dito. Tapos, masak, pinakamasakit siguro niya, kung sakasakali mabalik, yung talaga nag-participate sa mga questionable, mga pamamalakad, biglang ipapatuloy na naman nila. So, kaya nilagay natin sa speech natin, no? pinakakonti na doon, itago yung ebidensya, paano natin madadala sa sa husgado, yung mga tao na kasala. Or, baka naman magtagumpay pa sila na hindi pa namin nasisilip ay mapagpatuloy nila. Kawawa naman ang taong bayan doon. Sir, your next question comes from Evelyn Quiroz of Balita. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. President, what is supposed to be the reckoning period of those you consider midnight appointment? Is that the date of the appointment? Is that the date of the oath of office? Or yung date po ng release from the office of the president? Alam niyo man tayo kailangan pumasok ng technical na ganun. No? Meron tayo ebidensya ng tangan na ang deadline sa pagkaitid ko ay eh, March 10. No? Meron yung mga actions na ginawa hanggang March 11. Yung mismong paglagta ng mga appointment papers. Meron pa yata lumampas. At yan po ay eh, hindi haka-haka. No? Meron po mga ebidensya ang hinain sa atin kung saan natin nakita na talagang Walang kaduda-duda lumampas do sa punto na kung saan pwede mag-appoint ang dating presidente. Uh, Mr. President, pardon my ignorance. Ano po ba yung supposed to be the real meaning of midnight appointment? Ito hmm. po ba yung prescriptive prohibitive period na nasa batas? O po yung parang paniniwala na uh, parang bi bi binibig aniwawalan mo lang po ng uh, power to appoint yung susunod sa yung successor mo po? Well, kasama po yung dalawang konsepto ngayon, no? pero nakalagay nga ako sa batas, at uh, kung tanda ko sa saling ng batas, ay nakalagay isang punto na the president is prohibited from uh, appointing anybody two months, if I'm not mistaken, no? prior to an election and up to the end of the term. Uh, marami na rin pong case presidents dyan. At uh, yung, yung pangalaw naman po, syempre may kurtesiya. No? Kung baga caretaker ka na eh, nasa proseso na kayo ng pagpapalit ng uh, presidente. So caretaker role na lang sa'yo, dapat naman siguro hinahayaan yung susunod na papalit na makakuha ng mga taong komportable sa mga katrabaho sa pagpapatakbo ng bansa. Yun po ang nagiging practice. Last question po. Uh, does it include yung appointment po ba sa judiciary? Yun pong ano natin. Nasettle na yata kay Chief Justice Carpio na dumating bago nung prohibitive period kung tama ang aking pagkaalala. Opo. No, pero yun na nga, uh, baka technically, sinasabi ng word, in letter of the law, eh natupad, meron na naman tinatawag na spirit of the law, na sana, at yung nga ang pasakit no, sana, eh nasundan rin. Pero tapos na po yung issue ngayon. Uh, pero Mr. President, meron din po yata mga appointments sa uh, Court of Appeals, San Digan Bayan, Regional Trial Courts, and Metropolitan Trial Courts na parang after March. Hindi pa natin, hindi pa natin nahahanap yung, siyempre bago tayo magsasalita, siguro doon natin na may preba tayo na tama yung ating sinasabi at hindi natin galing mabola sa tabay. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Ren. Sir, the next is from Francis Rivera of UNDV. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sir President, yun lang pong ano, um, Justice Corona being uh, an appointee of GMA, sir, do you see it parang uh, getting back at you dahil sa binigyan ninyong amnesty itong move na ito ng SC, sir? Sorry, amnesty for what? Yung binigay po ninyo na amnesty, sir. Do you see this as parang getting back at you? I don't think so. I think that is not a related issue. At saka yung amnesty is still an ongoing process. No? Yung, I still need the concurrence of Congress and that hasn't come yet. Sir, ilan po yung midnight appointments and will you file for a motion for reconsideration, sir? Well, in, th in this attendant case, there are four no, that filed and they decided to execute the status quo and the order only on one of the four. 
Last two, sorry, sir. I'm done. Sorry, sir. Sir, last two questions. We have a follow up from Willard Cheng of ABS-CBN. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Willard. Do you think, sir, that uh, these adverse rulings of the Supreme Court have something to do with the fact that majority of the SC justices are appointees of the former president? I'd rather maintain the view that I hold them in respect and I expect them to do what is right for the people. Sir, I'd like to ask you. Uh, ano ho ang laman ng review ni Justice Secretary Laila de Lima on the case of the Morong 43 at ano ho na ho ang magiging aksyon ng executive dito? Well, we have ano, we had the National Security Cluster meet yesterday. Uh, there are issues of ano, yung medyo, medyo technical ng konti, no? Pero bottom line, when you ask for a warrant, there are certain specifics that you have to put in. What do you hope to find? Where do you hope to find it? Uh, the review basically stated that uh, there was a person that they were going to serve the warrant against. No, That person was not in the resort that uh, was raided. Uh, the, the firearms in particular will fall only in, the, in a general classification. Your explosives were not part of the warrant. So I emphasize to both uh, the Chief of Staff, uh, the Under Secretary representing the Secretary of DND, and Director General Bacalso no? that uh, we who are upholders of the law must be different from those who are uh, who are beyond the pale of the law, who are outlaws. No? So yung, it is a generally accepted principle that uh, in concept of lawyers is called the fruit of the poison tree. No? Your evidence wrongly gotten cannot be used, therefore it cannot prosper. However, uh, the matter is before the courts. Again, nasa jurisdiction na. So yung courses of action, we would want to rectify that situation, but that will have to undergo sanction by the courts that have already taken cognizance of the case. Case. Cor yes, sir. So, pwede na rin ho makapagsasabi kung lalaya ho sila, sir, anytime soon? Hindi naman pwede iutos na executive na lumaya sila without the court sanction. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. President, your last question will come from Joel Ginto of Bloomberg. Happy birthday, Joel. Sir, birthday din po ni Ann. Happy Mr. birthday. <laughs> Libre kami mamaya. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Sir, two points lang on, on the review of the IIRC report. Sir, how are we going to move forward? Uh, repairing our relationship, our relationship with China and Hong Kong when the Hong Kong government said yesterday that they were not satisfied with, with the results of the review? The only thing we can do is to explain exactly how the decision was arrived at, how, what are the limitations we have under our system of governance and also our laws. And beyond that, you know, I think uh, we, will, we will continuously try. You know. But at the end of the day, this report, this fact-finding commission, serves the interests of the Filipino people primarily. So we're, we're not going to change anything just to, to appease uh, the Hong Kong government? That I think is a very flimsy reason you know, to, to amend the courses of action we have decided upon. This is, this is not whimsical. We had a review of pertinent laws. We, found, you know, we tried to find whether said laws were applicable to the people um, accused no, of uh, failing to do their duties and, and various other things. This is the sum total of the collective wisdom of everybody who participated in the review. We believe this is the proper course of action and this will be the ones that will prosper. Sir, one last point. Sir, merong uh, report yung PCIJ na at the time daw po na sinabmit sa inyo yung report ng IIRC, you said something to the effect na napatapang yata masyado yung recommendations against Undersecretary Puno, Mayor Lim, and General Versosa. The closest I recall no, to having that meeting when we were we were reading the report was I was focusing, and I think all the participants who were the, um, the members of the IRC, no, in particular, will attest to the fact that I was calling, yung parang I was discussing the situation of uh, Colonel Yebra. No, yung I felt yung, yung tapang. I said, "Sabi ko ba is Yebra tasked to provide the psychologists? Yung where can we find that?" in the manual. Where, where is he tasked uh, to, for all the other support units? No? Yung intelligence in particular. So, kung tap, tapang I think would be a wrong word. But I was asking, paano bang basis kakastiguhin natin itong taong to na hindi niya obligasyon or hindi mandato niya? Even if we start from the fact that he wasn't even designated chief negotiator by the MPD. Assuming it's the negotiator's job to provide all of these things, why is he? Why is he being uh, tasked to do to answer for all of it when he was not even the negotiator? But beyond that, the negotiator is a subunit. The intelligence gathering uh, subunit is also another subunit, and so on and so forth. No? So, 
I, I'm almost sure that 90, 95% of the discussions had to deal with uh, you know, appreciation of wh one person's role, in particular Ebra, and where he failed or not, or where he complied with the mandates given to him. Sir, so at any, at any point, at no point during the review, you did not mention anything about uh, the degree of culpability of the Undersecretary Puno, Mayor Lim, and General Versosa. Uh, I may have, uh, no, I may have discussed about Puno. I may have asked if uh, Puno is being uh, accused of this. Does it not also fall that uh, Robredo would also be in the same situation, being more directly named by the manual? No. Then, you know, after a lot of all of these discussions, we went back. No? What does the manual call for? Amongst the salient features were, it was a local crisis, the local crisis management committee ostensibly was set up. Yung idea of when to transmit it to the national is not clear in the manual that was existing at that point in time. Therefore, how can you blame di ba, para people who would have advised? Said there was a portion that said uh, the National Crisis Committee should have been on standby. Who was tasked to activate that? Who was, uh, who was empowered to, to take it away from the local crisis management committee? Okay. Thank you, okay. Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Malacanang Press Corps. Thank you, Radio TV Malacanang. Good afternoon.